Should we, is it, uh, good morning, DS9? Is that what we're doing here? <laughs> You're now required every time. I don't know how I, they didn't do that. How didn't they not, not I, have that as part of the show at least one time? I don't know, because that's the kind of corny joke that DS9 absolutely would have done. Yeah. Hey, welcome back. This is a podcast on the feed of We Were Gamers, a podcast about games, but today... We're back with a uh, special sub-series, sub-transmissions, subspace portals, alternate yeah. realities. It's a, a subspace transmission here uh, about, about Star Trek. Yeah, we love and... Star Trek, and we haven't talked about it nearly enough. We should be doing this more often. But we are now post-Comic-Con and post-Star Trek Las Vegas. And, JJ, there's been a pile of news. There has been a pile of news. So we, wow. Yeah. We we had to do... We had to... Now. Now now is the time. If we're going to do this Star Trek thing, now is the time. Yeah. Because uh, there's stuff to talk about. Yeah. No kidding. You want to just jump in? Feet first? Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's jump in. Okay. They announced some stuff. Like, big stuff. Uh, I don't think we can go chronologically. We have to go with the biggest one first. That's right. Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise make it so and played by patrick stewart even so it's not even a like young picard here's a new actor as him as a young man or kind of thing nope they they're bringing back the the og actor yep and they're doing yeah and they're you cannot make a shatner og but that's true well the the original enterprise all of nwa is og it doesn't matter if it's cube or not right that's right okay that's right uh and certainly, uh, I think I was extremely surprised that a Patrick Stewart would agree to do this again and B that they were even trying to do this. Yes. Um, it sounds like Alan Kurtzman, who is one of the writers of the movies and also one of the producer of discovery is going to be running that show. Um, Okay. I don't get a bead on what that really means overall. If he just sort of like brought brought him back in, if he was responsible for for bringing in Patrick Stewart, and then he's going to hand it off or something. Um, it's it's interesting. It's uh, it's it's kind of like a seems like a J.J. Abrams situation where where Kurtzman's sort of like the head of uh, the new Star Trek universe, which. Isn't surprising, I guess, considering it used to be what Ira Bear and and Steve was Berm- it Rick Berman, Rick Berman, Steve Berman. Yeah, some, I don't re- remember their names off the top of my head, and that's really I, I bad you're considering right, how many episodes of that I've, stuff I've seen post TNG. I'm pretty sure most of the, like the documentary stuff and stuff that I've watched said that, uh, that Berman was the guy who was sort of the keeper of the series, more or less. Mm-hmm. Um, Ira, uh, bear, I guess also certainly was involved. Um, but it was more of that first guy. Um, <laughs> but you know, the, I think the other Rick interesting Berman. thing is we're, this isn't like young Picard. This is old Picard. That is interesting. Yeah. We didn't even, we didn't do that yet. Uh, that part. And you know, it's, it's Picard after he has moved on so unclear if he's still captaining the enterprise or not maybe he is i believe it did say that this was post enterprise time so i wonder if there will be a handoff at the beginning of the show i don't think so i think they'll but they'll do it they'll, like a flashback kind of thing not even i think they'll just steer clear of the enterprise and in its entirety it sounds like and the other thing this is uh, because this clearly is o- is old picard this is the furthest forward in the timeline of the main show, I think, that we will have seen. If you don't count, like, flash forwards um, right. from yeah, Enterprise like, and other stuff like that? 
stuff that is the, the furthest forward in the way that uh, of like a, where the series is actually set. Where did where so, did Voyager come back though? Because they did some future stuff too, where they call uh, back again, and LaForge was travel, like the captain of stuff. I can't remember what, um, what did LaForge. What was LaForge the the captain of? Do you remember? I don't. <laughs> I do not. Uh, I think in the end though. Voyager gets back before the Dominion War, right? Because there aren't there isn't there talk about the Dominion War and stuff from hmm. Hmm, maybe I'm getting my timelines wrong. Uh-oh. We're gonna hear about it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, feel free to write in and tell me I'm wrong. Uh, yeah. Tell us when the, Voyager got back. Because I super don't remember that, um, but I definitely remember. The Dominion War at the end of DS9 being a big deal. Yeah. Starfleet obviously having not a great time of that as it goes. Um, you know, they eventually turn it around with the help of the Romulans and whoever else. Well, they um, they eventually uh, flip the Cardassians because remember the Cardassians kind of like betray everybody and work with the Dominion and they yeah. eventually get them out of the fight and that's kind of it. Yeah. So, you know, the... Uh, so I think the at the end of the Dominion War, you know, you're kind of seeing Starfleet as a little bit on the back foot. They're not really sure what's going on. Obviously, it was the first, like, full-scale war I remember in any of those, you know, like, full interstellar galactic level war. I don't think they had any of that in any of the other series. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so now we're finally seeing some time past that, right? You know, this is set quite a few years beyond the end of that we have no idea what Picard was doing during that whole time uh, or, or what the Enterprise was up to because you don't ever hear about them in DS9 sure. so that's a interesting area of time for things to have happened and you know stuff to how did Picard deal with this giant war what was the Enterprise up to was he there well yeah and was was the Enterprise E pre or post I'm assuming post Dominion War Enterprise the Enterprise E kind of existed yeah, I don't know. You know, was that, uh, you know, did all that stuff about, like, you know, the, the movies and going back in time and whatever, did that happen pre and post? When was Nemesis? I assume that Nemesis happened before this series is set, right? Because Picard was on the Enterprise still. Definitely, it's going to have to have happened after all the movies, um, which will be interesting because Nemesis definitely had that feeling of, like, okay, this crew is kind of done. They're... You know, they're, they're yeah, going to all be they worn kinda, out. I wouldn't be surprised if in the show they talk about, oh, no, like Riker never took his own ship. He he just quit when Picard did, you know, that sort of thing. Like if the whole crew yeah. just was like, if you're hanging it up, Cap, we're ha- we're all hanging it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now there are, you know, there are flash forwards with some of those people in charge of ships. Like I was saying earlier, I think uh, um, LaForge was in charge of the Challenger, although that might have been another timeline you know what i mean there's certainly some of those there are certainly was that stuff like, yeah we're like oh we discovered a wormhole that lets us talk to the alpha quadrant oh, but it's actually but it's, not really our alpha it's a, quadrant it's somebody else it's a timeline yeah. wormhole not just it's a yeah hard to know i i would i, I kind of actually I like, I like that idea now like everybody hung it up you know <laughs> like, yeah i mean you know nemesis hey. was a pretty like devastating ending pretty much so yeah absolutely you know um you know is this show just going to be the tng cast but cheers <laughs> I, look i i was saying this earlier i think maybe to you or somebody else i would watch picard wander around a vineyard and just talk about wine for two yeah, or three seasons yeah you were certainly telling that to me <laughs> um yeah i mean look I would too, probably. Yeah. He just, you know, wanders and talks about the grapes and is like, man, I can't believe this rot we're getting and <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, that would be very funny, I think. And, you know, he sits down in an armchair and, oh, no, his uh, his family died in a fire, right? So he wouldn't have anybody yeah, to tell it, stories if to. You, if you go by the movies the future version of what happens at the end of tng right uh, it's like that the three timeline thing in that one episode at the end well i know that in uh, generations is they talk the, about how his his nephew died in a fire 
Yeah. So. I mean, you know, he's alone in that vineyard yeah, in that right, episode exactly, as well. Yeah, so. yeah. That's true. Man, there's a we lot of see stuff. see Cambridge keep... Professor Data, though. That's what I'm for. <laughs> well, hmm, so how does that work? It must be Data's other brother, right? Not Lore, but the other one. Hmm? At the end of Nemesis, I believe Data is no longer with us. Oh, right. I, don't, I guess um, we should just say there's no spoilers at, on these any of this stuff at this point, right? Like Discovery, maybe we do a spoiler warning when we no. watch that. Nemesis is like a movie that came out several years ago. At least I don't 20 think. years old, right? No, okay. <laughs> Not 20, but yes, it's old now. Uh, 16 years ago. Nemesis? Star Trek Nemesis 2002, my friend. Jesus. <laughs> you know who it's surprising to see in that movie at this point in time is uh-huh. uh is Tom Hardy. Oh. Oh right. Yeah, he's the uh the guy. Uh-huh. Isn't he the guy? He's the, guy. The, the bad guy? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy, right? He has gone on to do a lot of other things since then, right? Yeah. Yeah. Man. I just remember that bad guy looking so thin and stuff, and Tom Hardy has been huge in the last couple movies he's been in, so it's hard for me to reconcile <laughs> he's that. yoked all the time now. <laughs> he just I watched him. goes on one of those, like, hypertrophic uh, workout regimens and all of a sudden turns into the rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I watched him in a... It was like a BBC series about... It was like London, and he was trying to be a... What was this series called? I'm going to have to look it up now. Uh, it wasn't Peaky Blind. Oh, Taboo, a sailor that came back and to London, and his father had been murdered, and there was like weird stuff happening, and uh, he was trying to buy ships, and anyway, it was like some very you know like turn of the century London drama y show, you know the New World was still a thing, and he I think okay. he had just come off of like the the Revenant and Dunkirk and all those things. And uh, the oh, way yeah. he walks in that movie is not a walk; it's like a trudge. You know, he like his shoulders are so big that he's kind of like in this tight jacket, and he's hunched over a little, and he, mm. he walks around at an angle like he's angry all the time. <laughs> mm. like, man, dude, you gotta you gotta chill on the bodybuilding a little bit, I think. And then you know, now he's gonna go on to do Venom, so probably not. Yeah, uh, I mean, the pictures from Venom at least have showed that he is not less swole (laughs) and then i don't know if they're doing that other mad max movie that they were trying to do but he would probably build up for that again god i hope so i would watch i would watch it if if any mad max movie with that george miller wants to do i I want to watch i know i know it's tough because i don't think he owns all the rights to it so yeah that's why it took 30 years to do that one right just too bad because like man Fury Road is so good. It's just shocking. It's shocking that they would take something that did so good and then they'd be like, well, let's make it hard to make a sequel and then people are going to forget, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, let's get back on track. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sorry. We went way off the it's rails. Okay. This is like the, it's the entertainment pod, right? You know, and a lot of times it's we don't true. get too far into the, into the video. You know, like last episode, we talked about Voltron for like five minutes. I mean, Voltron's pretty rad. I know it too, is rad. So. Um, I don't know. Okay, I, it's not as rad as Star Trek. Let's just be clear about that, though. Totally. Um, but uh, you know, the Picard stuff wasn't the only news that came out of that Star Trek no, Las Vegas thing. No, it is not. And we have to talk about CBS All Access in a minute because Discovery had a bunch of news, and we'll get into that. But also, there's going to be three more shows on top of this. All four shows direct to CBS All Access. Okay. But do, have they have they decided or is there plans about what they're going to be? Because I I like Star Trek a lot. But like, <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, the most that I could find in the rumor mill: one series of undistinguished animated Star Trek. No, no idea when or where or who it takes place. Mm. I know. Yeah, that's a little bit concerning, right? Yeah. And the only touch point we have for animated Star Trek is that uh, s- the Star Trek animated series with Kirk and them. 1974. And, and that was bad. It's real bad. Uh, I've seen everything Star Trek 
everything that I possibly can find and watch. I have watched a few episodes of it, and I liked none of that time. I, I forced myself through it. I just had, you know, it was one of those things. Um, I had to sandwich it. I had to, like, put it in the middle of my watching spree and be like, this has to get done before I can move on to more TNG. <laughs> God. It was it's hard to watch. You have, a, you have a stronger will than I do. Yeah, well, so we'll see. We have to keep an open mind. But that one doesn't have much in terms of information. That's series number two. Series number three is a limited series proposal for uh, something related to the Wrath of Khan. Okay. And so when they say a limited series, they just mean like we're planning to do t- six episodes or like 10 yeah, or something. Yeah, so, you know, a mini series like a like a BBC style, you know, like maybe hour okay. and a half episodes, six, six episodes or, you know, a more American style, 45 minutes for 12 episodes or something like that. Got it. So they're going to do like an American horror story kind of thing where you only right. get one season of this cast right. doing whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then sounds like they're going to do stories on the perimeter of some of the movies, maybe. Okay. Uh, cool idea. I'm not opposed to that. Wrath of Khan. Uh, we're talking the Abrams verse or stuff, right? Not the old You know, one. that is un... Well, Wrath of Khan doesn't exist in the Abrams verse, right? So that oh, would true. be called yeah, Into I mean, I Darkness. Guess the only, so yeah, this has the to only, be... Oh, gosh, yeah. You're right. It has to be the old one then. Huh. Which is weird because what? who are they going to put in it? Like, like They're not going to have Kirk yeah, and what the... Ricardo Montalban because... Right, yeah, because they're... Well, Ricardo Montalban is dead, I think. Uh, and... I believe you're right. And I... And I don't know that Shatner is coming back as Kirk in any sort of believable way. Right. Yeah. Um, huh. So then what is the, huh? Okay. Maybe, I, I guess I don't know. Maybe the Reliant crew before the movie starts. You could kind of fudge that. I know that the captain okay, is a somewhat sure. recognizable actor. I can't remember his name. Yeah. Uh, was he the African American right, man? Yeah. Or... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sure, you know you could do I that. I want to do him justice. I'm going to look up his name because that's not fair to. Uh... No, yeah, it, it is. He's uh, he's he's memorable because of what ends up happening to him in Wrath of Khan uh, and that very unfortunate bug. Yeah, you know that's interesting that that bug has never really made a return, and all the amount of like making it's fr- it was native to Khan's planet, right? Wasn't that the deal? Yeah, but but for all the things that like that the, all the stuff that the show has done to kind of. Uh, take over people's brains and all sort of stuff like that um they never paul winfield paul winfield paul winfield okay, okay. that's Thank who you. we want to say was the because he deserves it he's a, a yeah a credited he great. He was, long-term actor in many things yeah uh i'm sure he's older now though so i wonder how that would work he actually passed away so i don't think that they can have oh, him okay well, um, did you know he was also he was also dathan from darmok no kidding. Yeah, I just am finding this out right now, dude. He's the he's, he's the, the guy, guy. the he's other the guy. guy in Darmok. Well, shoot, man, man, we got to do an episode about that show. That is the mm, yeah, might be the best enterprise or the uh, the best TNG. Episode, I have a hard time maybe. saying it's the best one because I've watched it too many times. I had to actually watch it for like school and stuff a lot. So it has it's there's so much there. That's a, anyway. That's a really good one. If if and when we eventually get to doing episode episodes. I think that one of the ones uh, that might we'll be better than that, one. we definitely will, but I'm going to throw this out there. The one with the the Borg, when they when they uh, convince them to go back with the virus and all that. Oh, the, yeah. The moral compass on that one makes that one better for me than Darmok. Sure. Uh, and, you know, if you want to talk about, like, episodes about moral compasses, the DS9 one... Uh, I think it's well. We were TNGing there, right? Right. We were talking about TNG specifically, but you talked about moral compass, and then that got me thinking about because I watched one literally last night, um, in the pale moonlight. I think is the name of that episode, mm. and it's Cisco doing flashbacks, talking to his computer, recording a data log about how he tricked the Romulans into coming into the war against the Dominion. Uh, and yeah, wow, that's a good one. There's a lot to unpack there about how he, you know, mm-hmm. the, uh, what's the, 
the phrase, you know, like, oh, it's like, oh, my cause was just, so it justifies the and justifies and justify the means yeah. and how he feels bad about it the whole time. Yeah, but again, we we both ranked Cisco, and that that's why, you yep. know. Yeah, totally. Um, okay, so con related, animated Picard, and also a series about Starfleet Academy. If that just seems uh. Like fine again, I'm I'm not opposed to it. You know, Star Fleet is uh, the academy is kind of like an untapped area. There's only really been like a couple episodes here and there, in any of the mainline series that talk about yeah. it. Yeah, you know, in a in depth kind of way. I'd like to see. Um, I think this is an opportunity also here. I think that Jonathan Archer retires to go to the academy after he's done being a captain. But you know, like what era of uh, Earth? You know, is this set in? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think it would be interesting if it's going to be in that area of sure, the timeline yeah. to throw him back in there, you know, at least yeah, once like or twice. Did, you know, did the, you know, that would be the early years of the Academy as opposed to the later years when it gets a little more codified and yeah. buttoned up, maybe. I mean, I'm not interested really in buttoned up. Are you? I'm not. I don't know. It, like, you could, I mean, you know, you can very reductively say that they're essentially creating a high school teen drama there, and you could set it in during any time. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, you know, it just depends on what you want to do. I mean, at some point, Wesley Crusher was there. Uh, we know, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, do you want to see his adventures through school? Probably not, but hey, you know, you, know, I, you could. I've watched a lot of TNG, and as I've gotten older, bagging on Crusher is not as or interesting as it once was. Uh, that's not really my point. My point is that the character isn't very oh. interesting, um, and I don't I don't want to watch a series about him. Yeah, he. I think that his academy stories have been told. I don't think that Crusher is the is the key to looking into that. Yeah, I wouldn't expect there to be any reason to go back to that story at the time. But you know, I mean, that's uh. That's something else that happens, but you know, like I, you know, like I said, I'm not against the idea of doing, you know, like a school drama kind of thing. It just seems a little cynical to place it there because it's like a very clear like marketing executive move of like, hey, let's let's make this show for the teens. Uh, you know, I don't know if it, if it is about setting up the academy or if it is about like a. Oh, not that they couldn't. Yeah, do something they could do good. something good. It's just that it feel it feels like why are they doing this? Sure. Because high school is popular with the teens. Oh, okay. That's. I'm going to give benefit of the doubt to the Star Trek area of things, but I want to... Totally. And I hope that it's good. I will yeah. absolutely watch sure. it when it comes out. So, one, CBS All Access is where you watch all that and Discovery. Two, if all of that is under Alan Kurt, or Alex Kurtzman, or whatever his name is, <laughs> Kurtzman, I know for sure. I wonder where we're headed in terms of the style of Star Trek. And I think that means we need to watch Discovery to find out. But it's weird or interesting or both that you don't hear any of the classic names attached, even to the Picard series, right? Like not where they're not going to find or they may be behind the scenes. Who knows? Yeah, find some I, of these wonder... veteran writers like um, Ronald Moore or any of these people, you know? Yeah. I, I wonder if it's a case that some of those, uh, veteran writers have kind of retired a little bit, but also maybe that they aren't interested in toning it the same way that the old series were, which is unfortunate. I'm interested in having them tone it the way the old series were. <laughs> so am I. Uh, but, you know, the I don't think that the studios necessarily are. I mean, if you look at Discovery and what has been said about it uh, the first season, uh you know, people were pretty surprised with uh, the different tack that it took, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I've read stuff about it, uh, not really like plot stuff, but more kind of like how's this series doing, that kind of stuff. And it seems like maybe they were trying to aim for a little bit different audience there with that show. Um, you know, a little bit more like relationship drama kind of stuff going on, and maybe that's you know angles towards more of a female audience. Uh. And I mean, hey, you know, the Star Trek tent is big. We can fit a lot of people under here, of course. But I don't know what that does to the quality of the writing uh, or if it's just different writing that just isn't interesting to me. Um, I don't know. The Not to say that they couldn't do good stuff. I'm sure that they will. Uh, and some of the news about that's coming out for the next season of Discovery is 
pretty interesting, don't you think? I am 100% more in. <laughs> yeah, so... Anson Mount, I think we mentioned in one older episode or something like that. And some of these episodes, by the way, I'm just going to throw this out here 30 minutes into the, the pod. But some of these episodes are going to be out of order. Um, we have recorded a couple of these on different themes and topics over the past couple months. But we wanted this one to come out first because it's related to the news that just happened so apologies if you in a later episode and maybe i'll throw some disclaimer at the front of these later hear this stuff again uh when the rumors happened but anson mount is going to be captain pike and i really like that actor he's was in uh, hell on wheels and a couple other movies um Mm -hmm. and he's playing captain pike uh previous obviously to what later happens to captain pike (laughs) Right, uh, yeah. Which is kind of sad to think about, right? He knows what happens to his character. Does that think you think that makes him a better actor or like feel more for the character a little bit? Maybe, but you know, you co- obviously the character at that time doesn't have any notion about that happening either. Yeah. So, you can't really take that into account other than maybe as like a you know, knowing the end point maybe gives you a little bit of like a tragic arc if you want to build something like that. I think that. it's great and also very sad to be adding to Captain Pike and his story, right? Like, mm-hmm. Captain Pike is, has this myth- mythos around him. People like him quite a bit, especially given what happens to him and and how it uh, right. all resolves and, uh, you know, Spock's role in getting him to a place where he can live in peace and stuff yeah. like that. And, and that's a great mythos. And then to add to what sounds like, you know, it's been a very successful series and adding him to that and giving him a role in it. And we saw some preview footage at Comic-Con a little bit of uh, Captain Pike running yeah. around. And JJ, he is wearing a yellow shirt. Hey. Did you see that? Yeah, I did see that little trailer. It looks like the Discovery has a separate uniform than the rest of Starfleet. So that's weird. I am interested in hearing how they attempt to justify that because why? <laughs> why would they Good do question. this? More reasons to watch the show. So Captain Pike coming in, uh, there was a little preview footage at Comic-Con of Pike joining the crew and guess what showed up in that footage there, buddy? What was the it, Enterprise. Andrew? Yeah. And man, does the 1701 look good. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, it's not like a, a long shot of it, but you can long definitely to see they took, and drool. oh yeah, <laughs> they give you, they give you enough, but they don't give you as much as you want, you mm-hmm. know? Uh, and they did some nice detail work on that thing. It looks, it looks both old and modern yeah. in the way that, uh, it's still very recognizably the enterprise, but you know, painted with the high definition graphics brush instead of the <laughs> old model built with toothpicks and styrofoam yeah, brush. Yeah. <laughs> it looks beautiful. Um yeah. I I think I have a small announcement at the end of this pod about something that I did that you don't know about, but uh we'll come back to that. Okay. Uh okay. if we can get to it. If not, we'll do it on another podcast. Um but it's related to models. <laughs> Let's just say Cool. Um, and so that's not the only news from Discovery. Also, they're going to be adding not just a storyline about Spock, but Spock. Yeah. So this, uh, while I am all about Pike and the Enterprise, I'm more hesitant about Spock only because of the the character has like a ton of weight already. Right. He's like a big, super well known character. What else do we need to know about Spock in his like? slightly earlier years Mm -hmm. um now Um, do you know that what's her name sneakwood sneakwa uh the the, basically one of the figureheads of the show um okay is also is related to spock somehow oh she she's related to nimoy in some way sneakwa sneakwa green she is supposedly and i don't think this is a spoiler uh but turn turn away for 30 seconds if you need it uh, she is supposedly okay. the adopted sister of Spock. Huh. Okay. Interesting. He would have never mentioned that. Right. Right. But I guess he's kind of buttoned up, so maybe. Yeah. 
I don't I don't quite understand how that works. Maybe it's I don't either. Because it's in the canon universe too, right? So again, yeah. we'd have to watch the show, but adding such a like direct tie to something and then not not yeah. mentioning it more than that that would have seemed weird. So I guess maybe it's okay for them to say he's going to be in the show because uh, unless there's some kind of like super secret reason that it has to be kept secret forever. Right. And ever at the yeah. End. So we'll see. Um, it we'll sounds see, like the second season of discovery is um, very related to, and why Pike is on the show is related to, and we can come away back. No more spoilers from the discovery here related to finding out something that happened to Spock. Mm. And so he okay. will not be, it doesn't sound like he will be part of the show from the start. It will be well, another uh, movie number three, <laughs> the search for. I was going to say it's going to be the search for <laughs> Spock. Yeah. Uh, keep searching. Keep searching for Spock again. Um, and they have not announced the actor either. So I yeah. I don't know how they can't Obviously, make it Zachary Quinton. Zachary Quinton. Yeah. yeah. Right? It kind of has to be. It certainly would provide good continuity for everyone uh, for them to do yeah. that. Uh, I don't know what he, the actor, is doing these days. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's tough. Uh, the casting for that position in particular, I think no matter who you get, is going to be really rough. It, whether it's uh, Zachary Quinto or someone else, uh, that that's like stepping into gigantic shoes uh, Zachary Quinto at least has already put the shoes on in the past, so you feel less bad. I really about hope it. people don't um, hate me for saying this, but he did a f- perfectly acceptable and then starring job, right? Like the first movie they did of all the things that I can complain about in the the Abrams verse, they did a good handoff, and uh, and yeah. then he stepped into it just fine after that. When he was allowed to not be angry Spock that didn't get along with Kirk and then finally could get along with Kirk, he became mm. the Spock we wanted and needed. So I'm I'm really hoping that if they can just please convince him to do it. <laughs> well, you know, and then it's possible they don't want to connect it to the Abrams verse that much by using the same actor. So maybe they do someone else uh, just to kind of keep the universes separate he's a little. around he's young enough to still play the same guy I, you know like i said i don't know yeah, how you do this i think you're I either you're in trouble no matter right. who you do so well, it's, unless you it's do it's Quinto, and then you're not in trouble well i mean i don't know but th- some people might think uh, you're in yeah. trouble i don't know it's okay. tough well that's the last of the news there other than the fact that there's now two movies in development well you know i I think that's good news uh, that there are movies in development only because I think that most recent, what was the the most Beyond. recent one? Beyond, thank you. I could not remember the subtitle. Uh, was seen to kind of have not done that well. Um, yeah, it was surprising in, in considering terms of Jeremy office. Lin was in on it and all that. Uh, I mean, I enjoyed sure. it. Uh, it certainly was the most grounded Star Trek of that one we'd had in a while. Like essentially the whole movie took place on a planet more mm-hmm. or less. Um, I, I liked it quite a bit, actually, when I thought back on it, when we were kind of like talking about movies mm-hmm. and stuff a while ago on this yeah, podcast. I, I certainly didn't, I certainly didn't hate yeah, it. Um, it's, it's, it's not the most memorable of those Abrams verse movies Definitely either, not. but, uh, you know, Hey, it was mm-hmm. fine. So, uh, <laughs> good to hear that at least it did well enough for them to continue doing stories from over there. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it, man. That's the news. Whew, a lot of news. Good news. And then we picked another topic for today because we didn't think the news would last long enough, but I don't, maybe it did. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We could we could still do our topic. I okay. think so. Uh, JJ and I have in the talked about some captains and stuff on this show. I don't know if those episodes have come out. <laughs> mm, probably, probably not. not. Yeah. Um, but this is good because this this is not related to any of those other ones. We're designing our own bridge crew. Yeah. We're gonna we're well, gonna pick some people. Yeah, Let's pick a you crew. know it's like a fantasy uh, fantasy bridge, right? Sure, right? yeah, a little bit, yeah. And you know maybe why don't we leave the captain off it here? Uh, that might be a good way for people to be interested in the future episodes of this. Okay, podcast. fair enough. And we're the captain. Yeah, or we're we're deciding it's, the it's, shots. We're of the... we're calling the shots. It's our bridge yeah. crew. 
uh, because we all know, because I think that that captain's episode hasn't aired yet, who we would pick as captain anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's that's a good little uh, preview for you who are interested in us arguing about who the best captain is. That's that's out there. It could be coming up soon. Okay. I don't have to argue with you about positions, right? Well, this is a, this is a yeah. fantasy so, like, draft. What, what positions are we drafting for? <laughs> yeah, so I, that's a good question because it, as the shows have gone on, the members of the bridge crew change. Uh, and yeah, what so who counts as bridge you know, the, crew or command crew versus bridge crew or you know? Right. You know, so you have uh in the original series, uh there's no like first officer type position. So you don't have a person like you know, like your Rikers or your Chakotes, uh, those kind of mm-hmm. people don't mm-hmm. exist in the original series. Uh, there's a science officer in Spock uh, on the bridge there, which is not always uh, that kind of position isn't always there. They sometimes have like a medical person instead, or they'll have like a security person mm-hmm. or a weapons mm-hmm. person, but not like not necessarily a named science we'll person. See, the Enterprise D had two helm officers. Yep, you have like a, uh, and so like, are we picking two helm people or just one? Um, you know, th- these are the kinds of questions that I have. Like, do you want to p- pick doctors? The doctors aren't really technically part of the bridge yeah, crew, or engineers, and engineering the same way, mm-hmm. right? They're sort of down in engineering, doing engineering stuff, but they're pretty important part of the the ship, I mm-hmm. think. So, you know, there's a lot of, like, questions. It's like, what counts? You know, are, <laughs> are we picking our favorite characters from every position in the shows over time? Um, no, no. So, no. Here's one thing that I can definitely answer for you right off the bat. You're not picking your okay. favorite. You're picking a crew that you think mm-hmm. perform. If you had, could pick across space and time, the crew that would perform best. But I have a problem with that. What uh-huh. are you trying to perform best at? Are you picking a yeah, wartime crew, a science crew? Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a galaxy class crew. Like, what? What are we going for? Yeah, great question. You know, but and because of the way a lot of the characters sort of uh, diverge, you know, they, a lot of them are sort of tied to the settings they come from. So, like, certain characters wouldn't work in a certain kind of right, a setting, right. right? So, I'm saying though that we're going to set this at the end of the dominion war or whatever in terms of timeline so the furthest along we can be and that any character you pick has full knowledge so like if you picked someone from discovery timeline or Mm -hmm. or they they get get, yeah they'll get brought up to speed right like they don't have to like oh well that person doesn't know as much as this person well they would because they're brought up to speed so you have to pick based on abilities basically right now okay I'm going to say, well, let's see, one comms, one weapons yeah. officer, a helm mm-hmm. officer, just one. Yeah, that all that makes sense. Uh, a first officer? Yeah, I think we should pick a first okay. officer and and a uh, probably should have a doctor. Okay. I think just to, you know, someone to compliment the rest of those people. Okay, so then that, that then, leaves us with science and engineering question marks. Yeah. People are screaming Maybe. because they want us to pick them or not pick them. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, it may be pick one or the other uh, if you have, like, strong feelings on that okay. one. Okay, so it's a, a generalized science position, engineering or science. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. That's it. Which way do you want to work on this? Um... Uh, let's start with the helm, I think. You know, the, someone has to guide this okay. ship. We've got to steer it somewhere, point this podcast at a destination <laughs> and, and head there. Uh, so who do you think you would choose? Here's my dilemma. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> it's not easy. No, it, it's, the, the, the hard part is this. How do you not pick data for every position? I so yeah. Uh uh I intentionally didn't select data for any of the positions because of that dilemma. Okay. So not having selected data for this position, I choose Tom Paris. And so do I actually. Awesome. 
Yeah. Uh, so that's a uh, – Tom it was – uh, throughout the course of Voyager kind of grows to be like, besides being the quote hotshot pilot, which I don't know that matters when you're driving a giant, giant starship, right? Uh, it's not like you can fit it through tiny holes when it's huge. Um, he ends up being like a really good, he has a, a really good arc in Voyager of like a guy who kind of starts off not caring so much and then comes back around to the end to having a lot more heart and, you know, really caring for yeah, the crew. Yeah, and you, you so, recall he's he's also one of the... Um, he's not part of Chakotay's crew, but he's definitely part of the Maquis resistance. Um, so, yeah. you know, he's he's a, his abilities at piloting overcome a lot of issues in the show in terms of where he came from and what he did. And and uh, I think the redemption arc of, of not just his... he You know, he's kind of brash and becomes Bolana's betrothed etc and settles down and all mm-hmm. that but you could also go through yeah. the um the morality arc as well so interesting yeah. and beyond that apparently he's the best pilot in starfleet so hey <laughs> can't start can't start better than the right? best right exactly yeah all right uh we picked we started with helm um yep i think then we're gonna go to comms we got to be able to talk to people okay yep very important to communicate went, uh hoshi sato Okay. Uh, and uh, for people that don't remember, Hoshi is from Enterprise, yep. mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, on my end, I picked uh, the old uh, and still great Nichelle Nichols as uh, Lieutenant Ahura. Okay. I did not... I thought I was going to catch a little flack for not picking Ahura. Um, I mean, I don't know. Uh, Hoshi has uh, some... Throughout the course of Enterprise, she has a lot of really great arcs and clearly is one of the more, like, knowledgeable characters on she that show. She does not have a universal translator to do what she does, which is why I picked her. Right. So she does a lot of, like, on-the-fly language stuff, which obviously bring pop forward, sort of negates that ability and need. Um, but she definitely has uh, a lot of skill besides that, but probably would translate very yep. well. Yeah. Um, and obviously... Uhura, I think she's, what, much more of a hardened explorer than Sato would be, right? Sure, Uh, yeah. She's seen some stuff. Um, She's definitely what I would pick if I was picking, like, a wartime crew. Yeah. And, you know, I think she has, uh, once she's brought up to speed with the newer systems and everything, uh, has the correct level of experience uh on everything and is she she's clearly met all these races before has interacted with them would know uh you know when the captain needs to be notified and when i can handle this transmission and and not uh send it up definitely to the captain. right yeah um she definitely would be one of the strongest members of a bridge crew no matter who you picked right she would de- like if you totally. were trying to anchor a crew a lot of crews probably it's crazy that you could anchor a crew off of everybody in the original series basically yeah totally because a lot of the later crews they anchor on someone like um voyager you would say either it would probably be like balana or janeway would Mm -hmm. have would be one of the the main story arc people there or ds9 would be cisco or cisco (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's cisco yeah. there's really yeah, no but one else the, the, the later crews have this have a strongest character and i think that if you were going to do a bridge crew of, of everybody ohura might yeah might be the strongest of them well and it's you know the, a lot of the cases those that original series crew defined those roles they you have to start with them because they're the ones who created the role, not just in the literal sense of like, they were the first actor to right. do that thing, but also like they embody all of those aspects of that role. And when you look back, you compare them backwards, right. And be like, Oh, well they didn't quite live up to and that. Also, uh, interestingly, the original series didn't really have like a, uh, the counselor position or a lot of outside characters outside the crew. So your moral compass on that show is, you know, McCoy and, and Uhura. 
a lot of the time. Yeah, it, it, I would say like McCoy almost completely, yeah. you know, and, and Uhura as well, definitely. Um, you know, it's like the Spock is sort of the alien presence mm-hmm. there. Kirk is the brash guy who wants to just go in and fight. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, you kind of have uh, Bones and Uhura yeah. there saying like, well, maybe this is a bad idea. Right. Should we do the doc next since we were just talking sure. about McCoy? All right. Yeah, let's bring on All a right. doctor. Um, since we said that we're ending the show, we know we have an EMH. And since mm-hmm. we know we have an EMH, I pick Bones. You mean like yeah, McCoy? McCoy? Yeah, Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I think that's probably one of the strongest choices. Uh, he obviously has the best personality of all the doctors, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Um, or I like it the most anyway. My my uh, choice is hard, though, because you have a lot of doctors like Phlox and Bashir who are much mm-hmm. more science knowledgeable. Or you could go with Crusher, right. who is much more, I think, um, tech capable oh. than... Or, or like a, a better family doctor, yeah, perhaps. Yeah, somebody that could could definitely anchor the ship maybe a little bit better than Mm -hmm. he can. But I don't know. There's something about like that field medic style that I just can't get over for my crew. Anyway, I, I, I can't be mad at your pick. Just especially Uh, knowing there's an EMH to back him up. (laughs) Yeah, that does help. It does help. Uh, and I sort of, I, I zigged a little bit there and I did go with Bashir. I think, uh, Bashir's science knowledge and stuff is what makes it great. He's clearly interested in a ton of stuff besides just right. medicine. Uh, and you get some of that in DS9. And I think it's cool to have a doctor that you can put in doing other kinds of science stuff besides just Yeah, that was people. a good choice. I, that was my, my toss-up between those two. Also, then you get to have sweet holodeck programs of Bashir's secret agent. <laughs> and that stuff <laughs> is hilarious, I think. <laughs> Okay, uh, I picked the last two positions. You, where are we going next? All right, uh, let's do weapons and ship security stuff. Okay, you go. All right, so I think there's like there. I I was pretty much down to two people because there's really only two that I would be that interested in having here, and those uh, would be Worf or Odo, and I think I end up picking Worf. Only because of where I like where his character is at the end of this arc better than I like where Odo's mm-hmm. is. Um, not that Odo is bad or I wouldn't enjoy having him. It's just that he seems like he would be a little too uptight to deal with on a ship where you ha- then have to uh, be a little flexible sometimes. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's cool. I had a hard time with Worf. Because when I started yeah. with Worf, I ended with wanting my entire bridge crew to be Klingons, and then I was like, okay, so I'm just on a bird of prey. I mean, Which hey. is fine, but it's not what we were yeah, headed for there. Um, no. So I assumed that Worf was captaining his own ship and was unavailable to me. Um, okay. And since I made that assumption, uh, I also kind of got a little bit off the rails with my choice, which was not a weapons officer. I went Kieran Reese. Okay. No, I, I get that, though. She kind of does security yeah, stuff. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but because of her rebel fighter against the Cardassian status, I thought she had the mm-hmm. chops to be a security officer and a weapons officer. And so I, I thought, if it, you know, my crew was kind of a little bit on the uh, green side, I guess, side. maybe. Yeah, you know. So we, mm-hmm. we added a little bit of, of uh, tough as nails with her there. You'll have, you'll have to find a way to get her inducted into Starfleet or That's something. Okay. That's why I said I got a little yeah. off the rails there, but I'm sh- I'm sure you can sure. figure it out. Uh, so then let's see. We kind of have a a science or engineering yep. position that we, we uh-huh. got to figure out Again, here. Again, impossible not to just say data is the best. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yeah. So you know you, you kind of want to probably pick data for half of these positions. Mm-hmm. So we won't. Uh, so then in that case, uh, I picked the man himself, Miles O'Brien, Oh, wow! who is <laughs> unquestionably <laughs> the most fun engineer in all of the series. Right. Uh, whether he's the best or not, it's very hard to say, uh, but I like him. Uh, and I think he's great. He may not be the, he doesn't really get promoted to like chief engineer until DS9. Yeah. 
uh, but I think he deserves right, it. Fair enough. Um, I couldn't walk past the visor, so. Uh, yeah, okay. You know, LaForge has got to be my mm-hmm. man. LaForge is really great. Uh, and honestly, you couldn't be that mad if you picked Scotty either, because Scotty is you also know, great. You um, know, I thought about that for a while, especially given that we were going to update everybody so Scott would know everything that LaForge knows about modern science. Right. Uh, and yep. then I had to lay it out with, okay, but then LaForge has like one up Scott, Scott's designs. They had that episode where they find Scotty in a, yep. in a ship, right? In a pod. And mm-hmm. like, Scott's mm-hmm. like, oh, oh, you like changed all my stuff. You know what I mean? And then he one ups yeah. him and then LaForge one ups him again. So, um, not to knock on the Scott man, but. If I got to pick somebody who seems to know the most stuff that will get me out of a jam, mm. this, I think I got to go with LaForge, who doesn't lie about how long things are going to take. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is that particular part of engineering is an extremely critical. Okay. I can't, I can't ex- explain to you how much, how important it is to lie about how long <laughs> things are going to take. What do you mean you it's, told him two hours? Tell him it'll take four. It's, and then he gives you two, and then you're fine. <laughs> it's I love it. Uh, that's also extremely true to how real that's life true. works. You tell the enge- project engineers that I have I need three days, and they'll tell you you get one and a half, and you'll be like, yes, I only needed one. <laughs> um, yeah. So you know, it, uh, I think that's a. I think LaForge is a fantastic choice. You can't really go wrong with him. Uh, I like the everyday man aspect that o'brien brings to everything and and Uh, o'brien maybe has gone through more uh than any of the other guys with what happens on ds9 right you know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um it's hard i don't know yeah i there's there's this this particular position has so many great characters Mm -hmm. vying for it that i don't know what you do because you could pick spock here if you want yeah right like um like, why would you ever want to say no to Spock? Spock is great. Know. I just, I, you uh, know. So, interestingly, we, I don't know. And that's, yeah, you've got Worf and I've got Kira. So, we don't have an all-human crew. So, we're okay. We're not. Right. Uh, that was one of my uh, criteria when I was picking people. I was like, well, I need to get someone who isn't human on here because that's that's the correct thing sure. to do. Um, and I thought about getting um, uh dr flocks instead of bashir also and you know for more non-humanness um but i decided i like bashir's personality sure. better all right first officer so are we doing one yeah so this yeah i mean i think we should uh-huh. have one uh, do you have i mean did you not pick Riker? i did not pick Riker. <laughs> oh okay that's good i'm really happy to hear that then because uh, i absolutely did pick okay Riker. why did you pick Riker? So I think Riker has a lot of the, uh, the st- he is confident enough in himself to constantly challenge the captain and tell the captain that he's wrong about stuff when he thinks that he is. And I think that's probably the most important uh, aspect of a first officer to make sure that the captain is doing the right thing when there are other ideas out there. Okay. I've thought that he... Of of my options, that he might be too close in line, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, with wouldn't challenge me maybe as much as as I wanted him to. I couldn't remember if if okay. he would. I mean, I don't know. I have two choices, and one of them is not fair. Okay, I picked right. Data. <laughs> you <Yeah>. picked Data. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> because because if I got blown up, I know that he would take over and know everything to do. Sure. But I thought that that was also I, unfair and that I shouldn't pick Data. A little bit. Because, again, he can do everything. So yeah. uh, I actually went with another DS9 character. Uh, okay. Elam Garrick. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. Okay. I uh, like that. Because I thought he's been like a spy for a long time. And yeah, he's probably spying on right, you still. Yeah, sure. Which is okay. I, as long as you know. I just thought it would be interesting to have like a dude I, that was so far outside 
the realm of knowledge, but I don't know that they would allow me to have a Cardassian on the bridge. So, uh, I think Starfleet and their uh, security and internal affairs people would probably be not super interested in you having that guy around <laughs> all the time. Um, I think it's a great, it's a really interesting choice though, because he is the kind of character who can literally be up to almost anything right. all the time. And that makes for a fun person to have in a ship's crew. You, you got to have someone who gets up to stuff. Right. Uh, and, and Garrick absolutely is up to stuff all the yeah. time, whether those things are for your good or not very up to debate. Sure. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm allowed to pick either of those two. And if neither of those two yeah, are available I mean, to me, no... then I'll probably, I'd probably go maybe to Paul. Okay. Yeah. To Paul's good. I think, uh, of course this is all fantasy, so we can do whatever sure. we want. So, you know, if, if you want to have Garrick, I think that's interesting <laughs> and would be fun. It, it would be a fun challenge for the writer's room. Let's right. say. <laughs> yeah. Or Chakotay. Maybe I'd take Chakotay over to Paul if I had to like go with a real choice. But then that mm-hmm. gives me two Maquis, and I think my bridge is then also disqualified by Starfleet security. Eh. Yeah. That was fun. Again. Yeah, that was yeah, really cool. That was a good exercise. It, it's a fun thought exercise to have to think about all the characters and like why they would be good together. Yeah. I don't know. I, you have a hard time getting past the OG uh, best first officer in Riker. So I, I put him I aside know. a little bit. That's that's also why I had I I ended up picking him because I didn't I didn't really it was hard to get yeah. past him. Yeah. You know. Right on, man. Well, I think that that does it for another amazing episode of of Substrace Transmissions from Star Trek. Yeah, I think uh, people, if you want to follow this podcast wherever podcasts are are sold, that would be great. Uh, you know, Google, Android, and. Uh, the yeah. Apple Store on iOS. Leave us those sweet the reviews there. Feed of We Were Gamers, a podcast about uh, getting older and not having as much time to game. But you know what? It's also a podcast about getting older and loving Star Trek more. That's yeah. true. So this will be like a little sub series. You, you can find them in the feed. They'll say subspace transmission on them, uh, and hopefully they come out monthly, which is the goal, at least. Yeah. 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 So, you know, send us emails, podcast at wewerogamers.com. We'll still read those. I love them, yeah. Uh, If you want to title them about this, you know, just let us know in there so we can direct your mail accordingly. And until next time, uh, live long and prosper, right? Oh, we're going to get sued now. Oh, no, I don't (laughs) want to be sued. Live long and also prosper. Nailed it.